When we can't monitor how the concentration of every reactant changes over time, we need a different approach to working out the order with respect to each reactant. What we use is called the initial rates method, in which we repeat the experiment varying the starting concentrations of each reactant in turn, and see what effect each change has on the initial measured rate of the reaction. The data table here is typical of such a set of experiments. Comparing the first and second experiments, we can see that only the concentration of NO has changed. The effect of doubling the concentration of NO is to increase the rate times 4. So the rate is proportional to the concentration squared. The reaction is second order with respect to NO. Comparing the second and third experiments, only the concentration of CO has changed. Doubling the concentration of CO has no effect on the rate, so the reaction is zero order with respect to CO. Comparing experiments 2 and 4, we double the concentration of both NO and O2. Doubling the concentration of NO, we know will increase the rate times 4. And here the rate has increased times 4, so we can see that the increase in the concentration of O2 has had no effect on the rate. So the reaction is also zero order with respect to O2. This means that the rate equation is given by rate is equal to rate constant times the concentration of NO squared. Rearranging the rate equation, we can use any of the experiments to provide values for the concentration of NO and for the rate. So we can work out that the rate constant has a value of 440. We can also work out the units by dividing the units of rate, which are moles per dm cubed per second, by the units of concentration squared. The moles and the dm to the minus 3 cancel top and bottom, leaving units of moles to the minus 1, dm cubed, seconds to the minus 1.